Assalamu alaikum. This is Biochemistry Practical Demonstration. I am Dr. Maha. Our topic is Detection of Unknown Protein in a Given Solution. The learning objectives are Give the principle and significance of various tests done to detect the presence of different proteins. Perform tests for detection and identification of proteins and individual amino acids in a given sample. Proteins are organic nitrogenous macromolecules consisting of long sequence of amino acids joined by colloidal peptide linkages or bonds. An amino acid is a building block and the smallest unit of protein. Amino acid contains COOH group and NH2 group attached to a single carbon termed as alpha carbon. The biomedical importance of proteins is that they are the main structural components of the body. They act as biochemical catalysts or enzymes. Immunoglobulins are proteins which serve as the first line of defense against infection. Several hormones are protein in nature. Actin and myosin are the contractile proteins and help in movement of muscle fibers. Proteins also work in cell membrane, cytoplasm and nucleus of the cell as receptors. The transport proteins are the carriers of different molecules across the membranes. Storage proteins bind with specific substances and store them, example ferritin, an iron storage protein. Few proteins are constituents of respiratory pigments and take part in electron transport chain, for example, cytochrome and hemoglobin. Under certain conditions, proteins can be catabolized to supply energy. Proteins by means of exerting osmotic pressure help in maintenance of electrolytes and water balance in the body. So there are many, many, many functions of proteins in our body and they're highly important and significant. Some of their significant points, their biomedical significance, I have elaborated here. Now we will begin with the general tests that are done for detection of proteins. Basically, the tests that are done for the detection of proteins are divided into three main categories. Number one is general test, that is, you know, just to confirm the presence of proteins. Number two is that we say individual test for specific proteins. And number three, we do test for presence of amino acids. So right now we are starting with general test. Here we have the biorit test. According to the biorit test, it is basically done to detect the presence of protein in a given sample. The principle is, now principle of all the tests are very important and you have to learn them and memorize them by heart. According to the principle, the peptide linkage that is present in protein molecule react with cupric ion in alkaline medium provided by sodium hydroxide and give a purple color com complex. The reagents that we are going to use in this are sodium hydroxide 10% solution and copper sulfate 1% solution. So this is going to confirm the presence of protein by reacting those peptide linkages with cupric ions and alkaline medium is provided by sodium hydroxide. Next comes the lead acetate test. This test is again for the confirm, uh, confirming the presence of proteins, but it is specifically done to detect their amphoteric property, that is an 
is if the protein is acting as an anion in a given sample. In this test, lead acetate is the main reagent that we are using. This is the lead acetate solution that we will use. Lead acetate reacts with protein which act as an anion in an alkaline medium to form white PPT of lead proteinate salt. So we are going to get the salt in the end and we're going to get white PPT. That confirms the presence of protein and here it is acting as an anion in an alkaline medium. The reagent as I just told you it is lead acetate. Then the third test is sulfosalicyclic acid test which is again done to you know detect the amphoteric property of protein that is the cationic part in a given sample. So we are going to use here sulfosalicyclic acid proteins acting as cation here to react to form white PPT of protein sulfosalicyclate. The main reagent that we are using here is sulfosalicyclic acid solution that is 20%. Now we have the second category that is detection of individual protein like a specific protein in a solution. For this we have Acetic acid test, very important, very basic. It says it is done to detect the presence of an important protein that is casein in a given sample. Casein is precipitated out at its isoelectric pH 4.6 when 1% acetic acid is added dropwise. So the reagent that we need here is 1% acetic acid solution. This test is the primary test which will confirm the presence of casein. But because it is the first step, it is like not exactly like it is a primary test but not exactly a confirmatory test. If we want to further confirm the presence of protein, then after doing the acetic acid test, we have to do another test that is Newman's test. So Newman's test is basically a confirmatory test that is done for casein. But before that, we are going to perform acetic acid test. Then we have a third and very important test that is coagulation test. Coagulation test is basically done to detect the presence of albumin and globulin in a given sample. We all know what albumin and globulin are. The principle says when heat coagulable proteins are heated, for example albumin and globulin, they undergo coagulation so they are going to form a coagulum in the test tube if they are present in the solution. And the solution will turn turbid, it will give a curdy kind of uh, appearance and a coagulum will be there, indicating the presence of albumin and globulin. This can further be elaborated as, or it can also be called as salt saturation test. Means that this test is kind of differentiating whether we have albumin or we have globulin in a given sample based on their precipitation by ammonium sulfate salt. So the primary thing that we use here is ammonium sulfate salt. The principle says the proteins are colloidal in nature and they are kept soluble in solution by two factors that is electric charge and shell of hydration. If both factors are removed, particles will coalesce and they are going to precipitate out. So we are doing this process of precipitating out the protein by using a salt 
and that is why it is called salting out or that is why the test is called salt saturation test. This is further divided into half saturation and full saturation depending upon the quantity and the percentage. On addition of ammonium sulfate, so this is the main salt that we are using. When we add this salt in the solution, the protein will become neutralized and shell of hydration will be removed as ammonium sulfate has greater affinity for water than proteins. Okay, now the amount varies of ammonium sulfate and it is like the amount that is required to precipitate out a colloid depends on surface area and size of particles. For example, that is why we are doing this test because for albumin it is different and for globulin it is different. For albumin, it will be precipitated by full saturation and for globulin, it will be precipitated by half saturation. So the main point to remember is that if we want to precipitate them out by using the salt ammonium sulfate, we will use full saturation for albumin and we will use half saturation for globulin. Both of them will precipitate out, okay, but the saturation of the salt is different in both the cases. The reagents that we need here, obviously we need the salt that is ammonium sulfate. Then we need the saturated solution of ammonium sulfate in water. Okay. And other than that, we need 40% sodium hydroxide and 1% copper sulfate. But that is for the confirmatory test. Like this is not uh, the main thing. Basically, the main thing is the salt that we need. Once we get albumin and globulin, we can confirm them by doing a modified biuric test. So for that, we need these reagents. So basically, in short, this is what is most important point to find out about albumin and globulin, their presence in the protein and for salting them out. Now we shall begin with detection of individual amino acids. Now, for example, we want to detect a particular amino acid or a group or classification or type of amino acids in the solution. So for that, we have three tests, three to four tests. Here we are going to do three tests. Xanthoproidic test is number one. This is for benzene radical. It is basically for aromatic amino acids. aromatic amino acids in a given sample. Basically, the benzene ring in aromatic amino acid undergoes nitration on heating with concentrated HNO3, this is the main thing, at high temperature. On addition of sodium hydroxide, yellow color changes to orange due to ionization of nitrophenyl group in alkaline medium. So, in short, we are using concentrated sodium hydroxide, 40%, concentrated HNO3. We are going to actually perform this and when we are going to heat the solution with both of these things, we are going to get a deep yellow to orange, uh, you can say, change in color of EPT. So that is going to detect the presence of aromatic amino acid. For example, phenylalanine. Now we have two more tests here. One is Millen's test, which is uh, for amino acid tyrosine, and the other is lead sulfide test for cysteine and cysteine. And uh, both of these tests, we know their reagents are given, their principle is given, we are going to perform them. And for example, if we talk about Millen's test, we are going to get a specific kind of change in color, reddish, pink color or precipitates. 
reddish pink color or precipitates and we are going to be using that Millen's reagent which is a specific reagent consisting of mercuric sulfate and sulfuric acid sodium nitrate so we are going to use that and this is going to confirm when the change in color is there it confirms the presence for tyrosine and similarly we have lead sulfite test which is for cysteine and cysteine and uh, these are also sulfur containing amino acids uh, so we are doing this test specifically to detect sulfur containing amino acids so uh, we are going to use lead acetate solution here and sodium hydroxide 40 percent solution in the end we are going to get a brown or black ppt once again we are going to show you that and perform it uh, and you, you will actually see the black ppt forming confirming the presence of sulfur containing amino acids Uh, then uh, there is another test. Uh, this is basically for gelatin. Uh, this test is like uh, a test for gelatin that is a protein present in white fibrous connective tissue. Um, gelatin is an irreversibly hydrolyzed form of collagen. It is a translucent, colorless, brittle, nearly tasteless solid substance derived from collagen inside animals' skin and bones. It is commonly used as a gelling agent in food, pharmaceuticals, photography, and cosmetic manufacturing. It contains no tryptophan and very few or no residues of tyrosine and cysteine. It is the reason why tests mentioned for amino acids fail when gelatin is given. Okay, so following are the characteristic tests for gelatin if you want to specifically test it. Gelatin gives blue color in biuret test, tests for benzenoid radical, xanthoproidic and Millen's test are negative when gelatin is present. Now that is important that they will be negative if gelatin is present. Xanthoproidic and Millen's test that we have done before. Coagulation will also not appear. Gelatin is precipitated from solution at half saturation with ammonium sulfate. So uh, gelatin is like, uh, there are certain, some important points regarding it that you just need to understand and learn. These are the main tests and we have already covered them before. This is a chart and uh, you can go through this chart. It's like a summary of experiment, observation and inference that what we get in the end. As I just said, if we want to confirm the presence of general test for proteins, we have three categories that we have done before. Lead acetate test, sulfosalicyclic acid test, and biuret test. Do remember the observation and the inference. Then we have for individual proteins, acetic acid test, that was for casein. If we get white PPT, this means it is present. If we do not get white PPT, then we will jump onto the test number four. If we get white PPT, I had told before, we will do confirmatory test, that is Newman's test, which will give a yellow PPT and it will confirm casein. Kindly go through all of these tests and their principles. Then we have this coagulation test. On heating, we are going to get a coagulum or a curdy kind of appearance, which is going to indicate the presence of albumin and globulin. And then we have a very important test that is salt saturation test. As I mentioned earlier, for globulin, we have half saturation. For albumin, we have full saturation. And in this, we are using ammonium sulfate as the main thing. And the presence will be indicated by white PPT. We can further confirm this test by doing a modified biuret test. But obviously, we, we haven't performed it later. But this is just for information that these are the confirmatory tests 
means after doing this test, we can confirm it by doing modified biuret test. Now, this is another summary for the test scheme for detection of individual amino acids. We have also covered this before. We have the xanthoproetic test here, which is for aromatic amino acids. Then Millen's test, that is for tyrosine. And lead sulfide test, that is for, for, for cysteine and cysteine. This is a... Uh, Basically, a, this is basically a scheme, uh, a general scheme for, you know, just to make it more easy that, number one, we did the general test, biuret, leaded acetate, sulfosalicyclic. Then if you want to detect the individual protein, then we can do acetic acid test, number one. If we get a white PPT, this means casein is present. We will do its confirmatory test, that is the Newman's test. If we do not get a white PPT, so then it could be any other thing like albumin, globulin, gelatin, or peptones. To confirm albumin and globulin, we will do heat coagulation test. If we get a coagulum, then obviously albumin and globulin is there. So to confirm them, we can go for the salt saturation test. That is either half saturation for globulin or full saturation for albumin. And to further confirm it, we can do modified biuret test. Now, if we are not getting any coagulation, so then the possibility is that this could be either gelatin or peptones. And then we have further test to confirm them. Coming back to albumin globulin, their saturation test that we confirmed by doing modified biuret test. The third category is for individual amino acids. And here we see the major changes in color. We just discussed we have xanthoproidic test for aromatic amino acids. We have Hopkins Cole test, Millen's test, and sulfur test. Sulfur test means for sulfur containing amino acids. So this is a general scheme. You can also go through this and it will help you in memorizing and keeping in mind all these tests uh, for, that are done for proteins and amino acids. Thank you so much. Okay, Assalamu alaikum students. Uh, here we are going to perform those practicals that we have just uh, gone through uh, in the PPT. And uh, first we are going to do the test that a general test for the detection of proteins. I am Dr. Maha and with me is uh, Sir Shiraz who is going to perform those tests. So the general test of, uh, for the detection of proteins, as I mentioned, they are like biuret test, lead acetate test, and sulfosalicyclic test. So uh, basically, we will start with the lead acetate test to confirm the presence of protein. For this, we are going to use 3 ml original solution. As you can see, he's taking 3 ml of the original solution in the pipette. And we are going to add 1 ml of lead acetate solution. After that, we need to shake the test tube. Our observation will be the presence of white precipitate. White precipitate is present. Okay, so this confirms the presence of lead proteinate. So this is basically a confirmatory test for the presence of protein, number one. Now after that we have another test for the presence of proteins that is sulfosalicyclic acid test. Okay, uh, basically this test is uh, done uh, 
um, in, in, in this test what do we do is that uh, we are going to add 3 ml original solution He has added 3 ml original solution in another test tube for this second test and 1 gram of sulfocalicyclic acid. You can see this is 1 gram, please show them 1 gram of sulfocalicyclic acid. This will be added in the 3 ml original solution. Okay, so you can see that it is also giving us white precipitate. This is showing the presence of protein sulfosalicylate. Next we are going to do the biorit test. Okay, biorit test basically tells the presence of peptide linkages in a protein means this is another test to you know confirm the presence of proteins. So uh, what are we going to use here? We will take 3 ml 10% sodium hydroxide. First we are taking original solution. 3 ml okay so basically he is taking first he is taking 3 ml of original solution followed by 3 ml 10% sodium hydroxide please show them uh, what you are using this is sodium hydroxide 3 ml 10 percent sodium hydroxide plus we have copper sulfate CuSO4 this is 1 percent copper sulfate we are going to use almost two drops of this 1 percent copper sulfate now you can see the change in color that is to purple from blue to purple so basically we are getting this purple color which is telling us about the presence of protein and telling us about more than one peptide linkage the rest of the details regarding biorit test are I have already told you before and I uh, like in the presentation also uh, everything will be explained this is just that we are doing the performance and showing the results that is inference next we have acetic acid test now this is basically for an individual protein uh, to confirm its presence like casein all right so acetic acid test either if the casein is present it will give us white precipitate and if casein is not present it will not give us the white precipitate so for this we are going to take another new test tube and add 5 ml original solution what are you adding here first we have to add 5 ml original solution have you added 5 ml original solution okay so he has already added 5 ml original solution and he just added few drops of 1% acetic acid We are going to wait for some time so that if casein is present it will give us white precipitate. Okay now if we get the white precipitate and if casein is present we will continue with Newman's test. If it is not present then we are going to follow test number 4 that is coagulation test. Okay now continuing with the next test what we are going to do it is the uh, coagulation test. Uh, basically in this test we will use once again in a new test tube we are going to use 5 ml original solution and two drops of 1% acetic acid after that we are going to heat it. We have to heat it. Okay.
okay now we are going to do acetic acid test that is to confirm the presence of casein either we will get white ppt or we won't get white ppt if we get white ppt this means casein is present number 1 we will take 5 ml original solution in a new test tube we will add few drops of 1% acetic acid as you can see this is acetic acid few drops now if casein is present we will get a white ppt as a result okay so i think we have got the white ppt please show uh, the test tube yes so this means casein is present now as we know the scheme that uh, if casein is present then we do a confirmatory test for that that is the newman's test and if not then we follow test number 4 that is we are going to follow the coagulation test now uh, right now just to show you people we are going to do actually the coagulation test because we have done the acetic acid test we are next we are going to do the coagulation test that is for the presence of albumin and globulin we will take 5 ml original solution plus 2 drops 1% acetic acid this time we are going to heat it and after heating it we are going to get a dense clot that is uh, uh, you know the presence of a uh, uh, the presence of albumin globulin is going to be shown by a dense clot that is coagulation is there so this will only happen once we heat it we are going to see a change in color a uh, turbid or curd like and sometimes we even see a coagulum or a clot like uh, presence after heating it so this is our coagulation test okay after this we are going to do ammonium sulfate test that is for globulin we do the half saturation test for albumin we do the full saturation test once again they both give us white ppts all right so for globulin we take in a new test tube we will take 3 ml original solution Three ml original solution plus three ml saturated NH4 to SO4 that is ammonium sulfate. Please show them ammonium sulfate. This, if globulin is present, we are going to get white PPT, and then we can follow a confirmatory test. Okay, so as we can see. white ppt is there and that confirms or that tells the presence of globulin for confirmation sorry we have to do a confirmatory test that is biuret test from filtrate next we have another test that is full saturation test for the presence of albumin again we are going to use ammonium sulfate in this but uh, uh, we will start it in a new test tube 5 ml original solution plus solid ammonium sulfate salt here we have solid ammonium sulfate salt please note this is ammonium sulfate salt we are going to add it and if albumin is present it will yield white precipitate so we can see as he is shaking this test tube we are seeing the presence of white ppt and that is albuminous present 
Okay, so here we are done with these basic tests that were for the general proteins and for individual proteins. Uh, some of them they have confirmatory tests too, uh, but we didn't perform all of them. For example, we didn't perform the Newman's test for casein uh, because uh, 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 some of the reagents weren't there, so that's why. And some of other confirmatory tests too we didn't perform. Uh, for example, for globulin and albumin, if we want to confirm that, we can follow the biorit te te test for that. Then we have the test scheme for detection of individual amino acids. Okay, so uh, now we are doing the tests for detection of individual amino acids. The first one is for aromatic amino acids. Uh, here, uh, this is basically called the xanthoprotic test. And uh, first we are going to take 3 ml of the given sample in a new test tube. 3 ml. Add 1 ml of concentrated HNO3. Then we have to heat it until the solution becomes yellow like we are going to uh, wait for that and then cool it. Okay, so uh, we are going to take it out after heating it. As you can say, see there is this change in color. After cooling it, then we are going to add Okay, so after cooling this, we are going to add 2 ml of 40% sodium hydroxide solution. ml of sodium hydroxide solution 40 percent and mix it now as you can see it has changed to kind of deep yellow or orange in color and this shows the presence of aromatic amino acids for example phenylalanine tryptophan it is confirmed Okay, next we have for, uh, for tyrosine, Millen's test. For Millen's test, we are going to use 5 ml original solution. And we are going to add 3 drops of Millen's reagent. Now we have to basically boil it for around 3 minutes. Okay, so uh, after like 3 minutes we are going to take it out. A change in color towards pink type, reddish pink type is telling us the presence of tyrosine. Okay, now we have the third test that is lead sulfide test or sulfuric test and this is basically for confirming the presence of uh, cysteine and cysteine. So uh, basically for uh, cysteine and cysteine we are going to do this test. Uh, we take 2 ml of the given solution or sample. plus 2 ml of 40% sodium hydroxide then we are going to boil it at least for a uh, few minutes at least up to 5 minutes we have to boil it Okay, so we are going to take it out after boiling it for around 5 minutes. Okay, so now as you can see we are adding 2 ml 5% lead acetate solution. And as you can see we get immediate change in color and black PPT that is showing the presence of cysteine and cysteine that is confirmed.
Okay, so this is a quick review of all the tests that we have done and the results that we get. Number one was for the presence of protein. The first one is lead acetate test that gave us white PPT confirming the presence of lead proteinate. Number two is sulfosalicyclic acid test which again gave us white PPT which is showing the presence of protein sulfosalicylate. Number three is biorit test which showed a color change from blue to purple and again showing the presence of protein more than one peptide linkages. After this, we did uh, tests for individual proteins, for example, casein. So the, the, this one is basically acetic acid test, which shows white PPT, that means casein is present. Next is heat coagulation test. This test is basically for the presence of albumin and globulin. And we can see a kind of coagulation and whitish appearance that is confirming the presence of these two. Then we have, uh, we just uh, are going to do the presence of globulin and albumin, that is ammonium sulfate test. For globulin, we did the half saturation test. For albumin, we did the full saturation test. So this one is for globulin, which is showing us the uh, white PPT. And the last one is for albumin, which is also showing us white PPT. It is full saturation test. Both of the tests shows the presence of albumin and globulin in them. After this, we did test for individual amino acids. First is xanthoproitic test, which shows a deep yellowish orangish color. And uh, this, the inference is that there is presence of aromatic amino acids. After that, we have Millen's test, which is showing us kind of uh, a pinkish, reddish color, not exactly uh, too much red, but more on the pink side. And this is for tyrosine. Last is lead sulfide test for cysteine and cysteine. And this is showing black PPT, which is confirming the presence of cysteine and cysteine in it. So these are the inferences and the main tests that we have performed here. Thank you so much.